<laughs> this lovely chestnut's name is Mr. Aird. And the beautiful lake before me here is Spur Royal Castle Lake, some 60 miles west of Belfast. It's a great water for pike fishing. And in complete contrast to a lot of waters in Ireland, which most of people think of the huge, intimidating locks, this is only about 15, 20 acres, but it is exceptionally good fishing. It's where the actual accommodation comes in with the fishing. So it's a nice place for the pike fishermen to have a go. There's some stagings along here, and there's a boat over on the boathouse there. So I've got the option of fishing either. In fact, I don't really know what to start with. Let's go and have a look. decided to come out in the boat to start off with because there's quite an interesting marginal shelf here. There's about 60 yards out from the bank. It's all lilies and weed. Looks a good spot for pike. And behind me, it shells down to about 15, so I'm going to whack a dead bait on a free line, that side of the boat. Just leave that out there, see if there's anything big in the deeps. I'll put it on an elastic band and I can keep an eye on that. It's well within my vision. So should that suddenly go? And then on this rod, I've got a surface popping plug. I love fishing in this sort of situation. I'm going to sit down all the time, though, unless I have to really have to stand up, because in this clear water over weed, the fish can see me easily. <clears throat> Back that out over near the staging. That staging looks... A a very good spot to fish from, actually. I think I'm going to have a go from there later on because there's another staging up the other end because being so far out into the, the lake, it allows you to cover such a lot of water. A pike love to lie in these sort of situations between lily patches. I'm just gurgling and wobbling this plug through the weeds. It's almost clear enough for me to be able to see a fish come out and lunge at it. Try one near the shore. It's a lovely spot here. I can just about cover the entire radius around me. Beautiful spot. I'm so lucky with the weather too. I love these gurgling pots. No takes yet, but this is just the sort of depth of water, about three or four feet, plenty of weed that summer pike like to lie in, waiting to ambush the, the roach as they come by. Sometimes you get a take right by the boat, so I'm going to leave that and just give it an extra twitch. Fright the life out of me if something grabbed that now. A lot of water to cover here, so I'm not going to thrash. Any one spot, cast after cast. I'm just going to keep chopping and changing, give each spot a cast. Oh, where's a fish straight away? Ah, <laughs> it missed it. <laughs> I wonder if it'll take it again. It was only a little one. But it came out and tried to bat it in midair. That was fantastic. Oh, he's got it again. Yes, we're on. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic sport, this. He's only a small one. I think that must have followed that in again. Oh, we're stuck in the west. A lot of weed down there. There's a lot of weed. Well, I have to lean over because he's going round the. Don't want him round the. Whoa! We don't want him round the anchor rope. No, he's not very big. He's all covered in weed as well. Come on, my son. Well, you certainly wanted that, didn't you? Now, is he ready to glove out? No, he's not. They love tail walking these fish in the summer. I don't think he's going to tail walk for us again, though. Are you? No, he's festooned with weed. Completely covered in weed. Let's glove him out. I don't like using a landing net for pike because when I'm using lures, the treble hooks easily get caught in the mesh and, and they twist and it sometimes <laughs> he hasn't finished yet, has he? 
sometimes it takes you a hell of a time to free them, so you've got to be careful of these hooks. I just prefer to unhook them in the water. I think we'll try and unhook you in the water, if we can. There we are. And he's back in. None the worse for his efforts. That was a nice fight. Half a dozen of those in a day is going to really make my day. Let's just check the wire trace. Now, that's OK. And they're caveting on the surface. You've got to be so careful that you don't get any kinks and, and then snap off on the very next cast. Right, well, we'll let that area calm down a bit and we'll whack one out over here. <clears throat> There's obviously some fish lurking in these, these pads. There's an awful lot of milfoil coming up from the bottom too, and some thick beds of the broadleaf potamagetan. I do love these surface plants in Ireland, where you haven't got too many chemicals running in off the land. You tend to get a much better variation in surface plants through those lilies. <laughs> That's really working well, that popper. Let's try one to the shore again. <clears throat> well, for a fish that wasn't much more than about nine or ten pounds, that one really did put up a good, short, hectic scrap. I'm on 11 pound test here. Fishing any light is a bit foolhardy with all these weed, and it's quite sufficient to get a good fight out of pike of just about any size. And the rod's quite soft too, although it's got a bit of backbone down below for putting the hooks home. If a pike really wants it, it tends to grab it and put the hook, puts the hooks home itself. Just splash a bit of weed off there. No, I can't get rid of that bit. Oh, it's come off. <laughs> Have a look at the free line. No, nothing's touched that yet. Go that side. I do like this pike in here, though. It's a gorgeous day to be out piking. I'm normally sitting wrapped up in waterproofs on the broads, wondering when I'm going to have enough of it. But uh, summer pike fishing's great. I love working surface lures. Any second, your anticipation tells you that a big head could come up and bang. Let's have a cast to the right over by that big patch of yellow iris. Let that ripple die down. Any pike that's out there has heard it coming, possibly looking at it now and coming to investigate. Now let's give it some life. This popper's got a lovely propeller on the back, so when I'm just pulling like that, it's going round and round and creating a, a tail pattern that some little fish might make. When a lot of anglers see a great variety of plugs in tackle shops, a lot of them tend to think that they're only there to catch the angler, and I suppose <laughs> there's some truth in that, but a lot of them are designed to do specific things. This one's only a surface lure, it doesn't dive at all, it pops and gurgles and churns through the water. Whereas other with, others with quite large veins on them are obviously meant for diving deep. If you look at plugs, anything with a, a vein on the front of it is obviously meant for diving. And these surface poppers are without veins. No. Hello, I've got to run on that dead bait. Oh, look at that, that's bombing out. Let's hit it straight away. Yes! Oh. <laughs> oh. It's not doing anything. Oh, I think it's a small fish. It's kiting a bit to the left now. It's about time we had a bit of action on that. Oh, it's a small fish. 
He can hardly manage that. <laughs> oh, come on around this side, it's easier. Hardly manage that uh, half a mackerel. Look at it. <laughs> Ooh. Right, in you come. <laughs> Hello, he's come off. You can have this bit of bait now. I think I'm going to move. You can only work a, an area so much with lures before they start to get a bit twitchy. And I think I'm going to go into the shore. Maybe come out in the boat later on, but I'm going to go in for the, into the shore for the time being. And drive from that staging over there. There's a nice wide area there that I can keep the lures working. to be very quiet doing this because these vibrations do carry so much in water. Well, here we are. We're on the staging. I've tied the boat up and we're on terra... No, it's not terra firma, is it? It's, it's a floating pontoon. It's not too bad, though. Don't like all these ripples that send out. Any pike in the close proximity to him quite easily know there's somebody walking on water. <clears throat> well, that's a good cast, right between those lilies. That's not far short of where I was in the boat. Funny, once you've up anchored and moved, this pike will come into the area because if they're on the hunt, they're on the move all the time anyway. And whereas they might not move into the area whilst you're out there in the boat, they'll soon move in afterwards. And so you can quite happily fish to where you were in a boat half an hour beforehand once you're back on the bank. Quick look at the dead bait rod, nothing's happening with that. I really do think with these conditions that it's it's surface lures and perhaps wobbled dead bait. Now, I've put that very close to those leading sedges there. That's the sort of place where they, they love to lie. Let's leave it a second. Give it a twitch. Now, here we go. Yes. <laughs> that was to his fancy. You little devil, you. Do you know, you've got to think like these. You really do. <laughs> oh, he's all covered in weed. He's not a very big one. <laughs> uh, look at you. <laughs> in fact, he's all caught up with weed and the plug. Mm. You are a tiddler. But uh, you've just proved my point that pike don't need to be big to give you fun. Whoops, hold on, hold on. Let me just take the plug out, if I can. That's better. Put the forceps down. Predation in miniature. Look at that. Perfect little fish. Absolutely beautiful. Where you go. Well, I've put the lure rod down. I've actually got a run on the dead bait, Ron. I'm just going to hit it. Yes, here we go. Oh, 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 oh. oh that's a thrasher. <laughs> it goes straight for those lilies. It's not an enormous fish, they don't oh, pull. Now it's coming to say hello. Oh, <laughs> God, that's tremendous. Do that again. Oh, yes. Woo. Oh, that is wonderful. <laughs> that was a good jump. Come on, in you come. Oh, he's going to go again. <laughs> they come up and they look at you with one beady eye and think, blow you. Whoa. Incredible power. So much more fun 
Getting pike in the summer when they're up there fighting best. Oi! <laughs> well, you are the star of the show. You really are. Up you come again. Ah. Unbelievable strength. Come on now, in you come. In you come. Ah. What a lovely fish. You were tremendous. You've given me one of the best fights I've ever had from a pike, I think. What's that, about £10? Isn't it lovely? <laughs> Let's see if they'll hold on a bit longer with the dead bait. I've got a smelt on. I've got no shots on the line at all. Just the smelt. And I should be able to just gently twitch this across the surface. They were very vicious takes on the surface there. Very vicious. Oh, we're in weed. It's a lot of weed out there. Hell of a lot of weed. Just twitching it through the lilies. This can be a deadly method when there's fish that aren't really getting hold of lures very well. Just keep it twisting and gyrating across the surface. Oh, that's got too much weed around it. Some of the soft weeds here, the milfoil and the hornwort, comes right to the top. And so it's very difficult to get the, the bait through it. Let's have a cast out. Keep it up on the surface, that's better. There's pipes. Oh, here's one. He's got it. Yeah, he's got it. Let him go away a bit. And we'll hit it straight away. I think he's got hold of it fairly well. Yes, here we are. Come on, my son. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Flung the smelt out then. Well, they're lively, these Irish pike. <laughs> that was a real good tail walker. Hello, he's covered in a bit of weed, I think. Now, is that all you're going to do or not? No? Oh, he's not very big at all. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I think we'll beach this one. I have to sink that uh, dead bait line first. Come on, over you come. Whoa! Woohoo! <laughs> No, you don't. Trouble is, when they do this here, tail walking, they're inclined to throw the hook, so I've got to be careful. There's a nice patch of grass up there. Let's, uh... Hello, he's lining up. Let's beat him over there. Come on. Tremendous turn of speed, that. He's going for those bulrushes, no. Turned him. Still going. That's amazing. Come on. Should be tied out by now. To mind this tree. Now, come on. They're real thrashers, aren't you? Real thrashers. Well, and what about that then? <laughs> oh, it looks like <laughs> there's another fisherman over there. There's a heron and he's just about to get up. He's off. A lovely sight. That's beautiful. Now oh, the sun's going in again. Woo! <laughs> Look at that one. I just changed over to a surface popping plug and bingo, straight away. I think it allowed me to get out just that much further, but it's 
got into a lot of weed. Come on, easy does it. Go, that was a good fish. Takes her out of this world. Oh, oh, <laughs> whoa, look at that. Oh, these Irish pike really do jump. That is magnificent. Come on. And it's not a massive fish either, but God, that's going. Come on, let's have another tow. Oh, he's covered in weed, no wonder. Yes, I think he's going to tow walk again in a second. Or is he? No, he's heading for that bottom of Geaton. Yes, go on, what a lunge. <laughs> Oh, it's so much nicer. When you finally get the hooks to stay in on a plug, it really is. The trouble is, you've got a lot of weed around in this fish. You have to be careful of this. It doesn't go under the staging. Oh, that is a good fish too. Oh, that's better. Oh, where's my glove? Whoops, careful. Whoa. Hello. I want you in, but I don't expect you to jump onto the staging for me. Oh. That's difficult with that lump of weed on to do anything with this. Oh. Wow. They've got some power. As most of my piking's done in the... done in the winter, they never fight this hard. I think I'm going to have to try and get this down a bit and do something with this before I can get hold of it easier. Might have to beach it, we'll see. Oh, it's a long fish, very long fish. Should be a big double, but it's, it's very lean. Now, are we going to be able to beach you or not? No, we can't. Now, there's some trees in the way. Right, I think... <laughs> where's me... Where's me plug? Oh, that's incredible. Uh, no. Oh, he's gone again. <laughs> uh, this is crazy, this. Crazy. Oh, no, he's... I don't believe it. I don't believe it. <laughs> Dear me. Come on. Let's see if we can have you in. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, that's better, isn't it? Look at that. And you've nearly, nearly swallowed my plug, haven't you? Now, we'll have to go in through the gills for this. Amazing, I've never had plugs taken like with this sort of force before. Absolutely incredible. Come on, out you come. There it is. Floating twirler. That's a nice fish. That's got to be somewhere around about, oh, I don't know, 15. It could be a lot bigger if it had a bit of a belly, but uh, superb creature. Look at that. Absolutely superb. In mint condition. Let's put you back straight away. Oh! <laughs> Careful. Right. There you go. Well, that's lovely. Here we are again on the River Kennet in Royal Berkshire, and it's one of my favourite rivers. 
It's so clear and normally though, this time of the year, it'd be somewhere about this high and, and bombing through. I don't think I've ever seen it so low for the, for the winter. I expected there to be snow and it to be bombing through. We've been very lucky, really, this year with the weather, although in northwest Scotland, they've had more rain than they've ever had in the last 50, 60 years. And in eastern Scotland, just like on our own eastern seaboard, we've had virtually none. It's most peculiar. To show you how really mild it is for this time of the year, I do believe on the end of the, the island here, there's a nest with some mallard's eggs in it. Oh, look at that, she's got five eggs in there. She must have been laying them in January. That's amazing. mosey on downstream and explore the rest of the river. This pool is just too tempting. I've put some maggots in there at the head of the white water and I'm going to follow in with my float tackle. I've had to use a very heavy float for this pool, an even one, and it's got four AA shot to keep the bait right down on the bottom where the dace and the grayling live. It's belting down there at the moment. It really is pulling through. Hook a fish in this sort of current and it Get a lovely fight. Just holding it back steadily. Cool, look at that. We're in straight away. Oh, that's a good fish. <laughs> oh, it's going in the current. I'll have to put a bit of side strain on it and get it out of that main, main water there. Well, that does feel like a good fish. It also feels like a big grayling. Yes, it is a big grayling. Oh, oh, look at that dorsal fin on the surface. Oh, what a lovely start. Don't come off. Come on. In you come. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> oh, that's a super start to the day. That is Wilson, isn't it? Now, steady on. Oh, he's jumping all over the place. Don't want you to jump back in before I got a hold of you. Oh. Where's the hook? Oh, it's come out in the net. That's a bit of luck. Oh, what a beautiful fish to start the day. Look at that. That's a male grayling. They've got that lovely big sail type fin. Look at that, and beautiful colours there. Beautiful colours. What a lovely start to the day, isn't it? What a super fish. <laughs> that one's gone back nicely. I like to watch him swim off. The water's so beautifully clear here it really is wonderfully clear that's what i like about these southern chalk streams they're so pure you can see that there's willow moss growing on the edge of this sill here and it's bright green here we are in the beginning of february it's beautiful water i do believe the chalk streams of berkshire hampshire wiltshire dorset are some of the loveliest rivers in our land That's lovely, that's just at the end of the run there, about a yard beyond my float, it, it starts to shelve up and then it goes into the shallows by the island. So most of the fish are gonna be in this run or the other back eddy on the other side. But I've always preferred this run, it seems to have a, perhaps a nicer habitat from the fish's point of view, who knows what they want when they're down there. Perhaps the current close to the bottom there is just that little bit steadier and brings more food to them than perhaps the other side. Whenever I've been scuba diving weir pools, I've... Here we are. Oh, oh, what's this? It's a good fish. <laughs> oh, that's going. <laughs> Come on, my son, out of the flow. That's a good grayling. Come on. Hey, don't half go hard. It... Incredible fighters grayling. They really are 
Absolutely incredible. Come on. Oh, gotcha. I love the sight of that red dorsal fin as you bring them up to the surface. Whoops. Oh, nearly lost him. This is another male one. Look at that beautiful dorsal fin. Isn't that a sight? Incredible fish they are, Grayling. Absolutely incredible. That's just going round beautifully there. Nice and slow, nice and slow. Going back in the fast water now, just starting to give it a bit more line. It's a nice thing about centre pin fishing, you can just take your hand off it and let it go round and take line as the float wants it. It's a funny sensation, I can actually feel the, the reel underneath my thumb as it spins round. This wind's a bit, a bit hairy here. Oh, yes! Oh, that's a good fish. Now, what's this? No, it isn't a very big fish. I think it's a little grayling. No, it isn't. It looks like a big dace. Oh, at last. It's about time. Oh, that is a good dace. Come on. Oh, that's a really big fish. Oh, that is a good one. I have to be very careful with this. Come on. Let's hope the hook holds. Yes, gotcha. Oh, that looks an enormous great dace. Oh, it is. Look at that. <laughs> That's the fish I've been after. Oh, careful. It's funny thing about dace. They're not a big species. In fact, the British record's only a pound and a quarter. But look at that. That must be the best part of a pound. So, really, that's probably... <laughs> The best specimen I'm going to catch today, relative to the species, that is a clonking great dace. Looks OK, the maggots are OK. No, I don't think I'll bother to change them. I'll just bang that in straight again and see if I can hit that same spot. I haven't actually put the float there before. It's not always easy to get... No, it's not really going there this time because the... Main f oh, yes, it is. It's just... Yes, here we are. Oh, this is a good fish. Hello, what have we got here? Oh, that feels very good indeed. Very good. It's going very slowly, so I don't think it's a trout. Might be a chub. You never know. Sometimes you get chub in these fast pools. Hello, I th hello. Something's... That looked to me like a very big roach then. It came to the top. Oh, I'm going to have to be careful with this fish. It's back in the... F oh, that's an enormous roach. <laughs> oh, I have to be very careful with this. One heavy roll in that, that current there and it'll pull the hook out. Come on, come to Johnny. Ooh. Oh, the pressure against the hook is enormous at this point. Yeah! Oh, gotcha! Oh, look at that! <laughs> well, I never, never expected to catch anything like this today. Oh, that's a real whopper. That's got to be close on two pounds. He's got a very unusual orange blotch there. It's almost like a sort of a birthmark. Very strange. Look at that. Isn't that absolute magic? Change tack now. I've got a very light stick float on a smaller hook, and I'm gonna fish the sort of tiny little stream that most people when they're river fishing ignore. This is a lovely little carrier, this one. This is something I've designed on the end of my keep net bag, a bit of foam, and ooh, whenever I'm kneeling, it uh, just gives me that much extra comfort. Put a few maggots. Oh, it's very fast there. Now, I don't think this is much deeper than about three feet. Try a couple of maggots and trot through this. Old maggot pouch is handy. Stops me keep having to open and shut bait tins all day long. And if I'm using worms, I might put worms in the other side as well. Just one or two 
now. You never know what you're going to get in these little... Mind those bits of all crud there, otherwise I'll get caught up. Love fishing these little spots. You never really know what you're going through. Lovely there. Might be a little bit too deep there. That's pulling that through beautiful. Hmm. I think I was a little bit too deep. Yes, I was. There's a little bit of <sighs> stuff on it. It was a little bit too deep then. Come down a couple of inches. It's very shallow in front of me, and then it smooths out at the edge of the pool there. So you've got to try and work out where the fish are going to be lying. That's still too shallow. I'll have to cast it downstream. That's better. Give it a quick flip and let that go through. That's lovely. That's going through lovely. A lot of flies hatching here. Well, I mean, this sort of mild fellow. Oh! That was a good fish. I was going to say, in this mild weather, I would expect them to hatch. It's very windy, too. Oh, the, the hooks there turned in, in on a maggot and masked it when I struck. A lot of trains going by today. Hell of a lot of trains. Can't escape noise, even in the deepest countryside. It's amazing, it really is. Well, that's soon gone. Come on, let's see what's in here. Down we go. Oh, yes. Oh, hello, what's this? Oh, that's good. Oh, God, that looks like a good-sized chub. I'm going to have to let that, let that get down there. Oh, that is a good fish. This water's a lot, a, a lot fast. No, it isn't. No, it's a grayling. It's a big grayling. I thought, I thought that was a chub then when I saw that big bat come out. This is so fast here. I've got to be careful. I don't rip the hook out. <clears throat> That's me net. Oh, come on. Oh, this. <laughs> Flow here is absolutely incredible. I should have extended the net there, Wilson. Mm. Gotcha. Oh no, I haven't he <laughs> jumped. Jumped out. <laughs> cool, look at that. First trot down. See these tiny little places? Look at that. They produce the fish. Six foot wide. Three foot deep, the sort of place most anglers would ignore, and yet within minutes you can catch fish like that. It's a fine looking fish. Whoops. Hold still while I uh, do my dentist work. And we'll have to put you back straight away. It's trotting through there beautifully. And a little tiny twitch then. Yes, hello, what's this? Oh, this is better. Cool. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what on earth is this? I was trying to get in those sedges there. Oh, this is a better fish. Oh, it's a chub, yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. Oh. oh, I can't bring it up against this flow. Come on. Got his mouth open. Yes. Whew. Well, look at that. It's not as big as I thought, but it's a reasonable fish. You never believe you'd catch fish like this in these. Little tiny streams. Look at that. He's not a monster, but it's okay, isn't it? <laughs> About two and a half, three pounds. Oh, careful. <laughs> Let's put him back straight away. Oh. There you go. 
<laughs> Looks even smaller in the water. It's beautifully quiet through these woods. Just the noise of the birds. Be careful with me rods up here though. Next to these elderberries. See coming out into leaf too. Oh look at this. A glorious patch of snowdrops. That's beautiful. They're so early, they're not normally out like that until the end of March. Some ash here, birch. Oh, I don't know what that's doing there, but it looks like a flowering cherry. It's odd, right in the middle of the woods. This looks an intriguing little pool. I bet that's pretty during the summer, what with these tussock sedge and sedges all along that bank and big patch of reed mace there. It's quite deep here, and at the tail end, it shelves up about about here where this big bed of watercress hangs out and there's some streamer weed on the bottom. I'll even give that a bit of a go later on. We'll see. There's so much water here, just don't know where to fish sometimes. Well, here we are. We're on a a different part of the river now and I'm into fish almost instantly. It's still the River Kennet, but it looks much different to the, the weir pool and all the other little carriers. I don't know what this is, but it feels very good indeed. What is it? Yep, I think it's a little, little rainbow. We'll have to unhook you carefully, won't we? It's a nice thing sitting down low to the water. You can, you can just unhook the trout where he is. There we are. Oh, devil, you soaked me. Well, that was a good start, but we're not really after trout, are we? We're after roach and dice. Put a couple more maggots on. The reason I'm fishing the far bank is because there's a deep run that's carved out by the flow about 50 yards upstream of me. The, the current veers across to that far bank and on my own bank here is quite a few silt beds and mud banks but on the other bank there it's, uh, it's considerably deep, it's probably twice the depth and that's why the fish are over there. Lovely trotting this the way to view these rivers really, try and interpret where the fish are going to be by the current uh, deviations. We've done the same in the weir pool but we're looking for different things when we're on the main river itself because it's in essence the same width and the, oh here we are <laughs> and looks all the same depth all the way across but of course it isn't. Well, what have we got here? Feels quite good. I think it's a grayling. Could be a dace, I don't know. Some big dace in this main river as well. What's this? Could be a roach. It's going well, whatever it is. No, it looks like a grayling. Let's unhook you in the water. Come here. I'll unhook you in the water and then you'll come to no harm whatsoever. Hook's just in the bottom lip there. Yep. Away you go. Thing in this river, you never really know what to expect. It could be a grayling, rainbow, brown trout, dace, roach, chub. 
I've heard that there's even one or two good perch in this stretch and some carp too. It's most unusual. If we get a carp, it's too many. <laughs> That's going through beautifully now. Absolutely beautifully. I've gone a little bit over depth on this cast. Just to see if I can scrape bottom a little bit harder. I've got a dust shot about 20 inches from the hook and a number four, the same distance above that, and then there's just the shots around the float. So the presentations is really quite sensitive. For me, anyway, I'm not a match angler. Yes, we're in. <laughs> oh, this feels a good fish. What's this? Hello, hello, hello. This does feel very big indeed. Oh dear, Wilson, you're going to have to take your time with this. This isn't having any at all, it's going on the other side of the river. And it's very heavy as well. It's not, it's not fast like a trout, it's very deliberate. Picked up a bit of weed around the floor, it's just surface. It looks like a chub. <laughs> That's definitely a chub. That's a good fish too. I thought that was a really, really good fish then, but it isn't. It's not that big at all. Come on, and net this one. I'm not going to bother to pick this one out. In you come. Oh, lovely. Oh, put the rod down and have a look at you. Not a massive fish, but probably about two and a half pounds, something like that. Oh. Well, what a wonderful day we've had. We've had roach, dace, grayling, trout, and chub. It's been an absolutely wonderful time here on the Kennet. <laughs> and if you have a look over there right this minute, there's a short-eared owl quartering that meadow. Look at that. <laughs> Well, just by way of a change, just split the day up a little. I've taken the float rod back to the car and picked up my lure rod because the river keeper assures me there's one or two good pike lying along those sedges there. So I'm going to give them a go. I'll put the glasses on. Well, here we are. This is where I expect the pike to be lying, somewhere along this thick bank of sedges. It's very squelchy and I'm going to have to be careful here, I don't scare fish off before I've even had a cast for them. It's just a test the clutch on the reel first. I don't want to have a break up first cast. I've got a little tiny vibratory action plug on which has got a rattle inside it and when I twitch it it'll send out vibrations and pull hard, it'll dive and during these initial casts, I like to vary the retrieve, quick, do it a bit slow, so the lure doesn't do the same thing twice. Normally by now, we should have had a... should have had a take. Right, I think I'm going to move just above the willow. It's a nice thing about this method, it's a, a roving game and you never get bored in one spot. This bank's so spongy here, it's ridiculous. This is a nice spot here. I can work all along this, this near bank. Not too close to the sedges, Wilson. Now that's where I would expect them to be lying. Just along there. Another little twitch. Let it come up to the surface again. Yes, and we're in. <laughs> you... <laughs> I'd let that come up to the surface then and I was just going to twitch it again. <laughs> oh, it's not a big fish, but, well, I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's not a big one. God. <laughs> Let's put my green glove on. I like to glove pike out. I don't like messing about with nets. I'm just going to move him along here. I'm going to have to be rather careful with this one, I think. Uh, gotcha! Oh, that's lovely. 
Tremendous. Well, that's good for a... There we are. <laughs> Not a very big fisher's pike go, I'm afraid. <laughs> but absolutely great fun on light tackle. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to put him back in the river, though, as it's a trout fishery. I think I'll put him back in the side stream. Thank you.